How's it going, everybody? This is Mark with At Tech. Today, we're going to be showing you how to make a bash or shell script inside a terminal. This will work on Mac OS and Linux. They're both based off of the same architecture, so it's going to be pretty similar. This will not work in Windows because they don't use bash shells, but anyway, here we are on a Linux operating system. We're going to show you how to make a script, a couple of the basics, and then also how to execute that script. First of all, let's go ahead onto my desktop and we will go ahead and work from here. You can make your script in whatever program you want. I prefer just to use Vim. It's just a lot simpler for what I do. I don't always do super complicated scripts, so I just find it works fine in here. So I'll just do Vim test.sh. We're now inside of the Vim editor. Um, we may have a video about how to use this type of stuff. I'll put a link in the description if we do. Um, but Basics of them, press I to insert, escape to get out of your mode, and then you can do colon, and then you can enter in a command. So anyway, in insert mode, we can put in whatever we want that fits you know, the characteristics of a, um, a script. So if we want to print something, we can say echo, this is cool. We can do a new line. What a bash script basically does is it's pretty much just a list of terminal commands. So we tell it what we want to do, like echo, like we just gave it, and then it will perform that command. On the next line, it will perform the next command we tell it. So if I want to say pwd, present working directory, I can do that. I can say ls. I can say ls-l software, since we are on our desktop. And then I can even do something like cd downloads. I'll just go cd, and I'll do pwd again. So we should be in our home directory at that point. We'll hit escape to exit out of that. Then we'll do colon and then WQ to save and close. If we list our desktop, you can see we have our test.sh. To run any executable on a Linux operating system, it's dot slash and then the name of the file. So this one's test.sh, but it doesn't work. Why? We talked about it in a previous video. I'll go over it in this video as well. Pretty much you don't have permissions to execute. If we do ls-l or test.sh, as you can see, we have read and write permissions. That is the user. Then we have a couple of other, we have our, like our root and our staff, apparently. So we will have read and write permissions. Uh, if you want to learn more, I'll put the link in the video where we can learn more about how to change that. But basically, when I change the file permissions, we're going to add execute to the user in the name of the file. And then we should go ahead and run this again. And there you go we got everything it just did a whole bunch of stuff and let's start up here with the command where we ran it right here so echoes this is cool it lists the directory it does an ls-l of our software folder and then it changes the directory to our root folder or user folder and then it prints it out that's it that's pretty much what a shell script does. If we just go ahead and print this out, we'll go over it one more time. Pretty much a shell script is a list of terminal commands. That's all it is to it. It's just a list of commands that you can execute in a single way. So if I wanted to, I could have typed all six of these commands, but I didn't. Instead, I just ran it with one command inside of this shell file. That's all it is to it. It's pretty simple. If you know how to use Unix, you know how to do shell scripts. But anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll do my best to help you out. If you like this video, leave a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. This is Mark, and I will see you in the next one.